Recently, Fossi Audio reached out to me on ASR, inviting me to test their new product, the V3 Mini Amplifier. The V3 has not yet officially been launched and last month I saw it was being crowdfunded on Kickstarter. According to the product introduction document sent by Fossi Audio, it looks quite similar to the IEMA A07 in features. In terms of price, Fossi Audio revealed that it will be sold for no more than $80 with a 32 volts power brick. I received this unit some days ago and I'll give an early test of it. First of all, let's unbox it. The packaging is quite simple. Inside the box, there's a mini amplifier V3 packed in an anti-static bag, a power adapter, and a copper knob, or to be precise, it should be orange. Fossi Audio states that this orange knob is an optional accessory. You can add it to your order if you like this color. Next, let's take a look at the appearance of this V3 amplifier. The overall design is simple, with an indicator light on the left side of the front panel, and a large knob in the middle, which integrates the power switch and volume adjustment functions. This all-aluminum alloy knob feels great. What impressed me the most was its drilled heat dissipation design. On the top of the casing, there is a circle of differently sized vents. There are also four rows of vents at the bottom. These vents look cool. On the rear panel are the input and output interfaces, including the power socket. It supports a set of RCA inputs, a set of speaker outputs, and has a pre-out port. The power socket indicates that this amplifier supports a power supply from 24 volts to 48 volts. The knob on the unit can be easily removed and replaced. This aluminum alloy knob is very robust and finely crafted. Compared to the black knob, I really prefer this orange one. This orange serves as a great embellishment, and it looks more upscale when installed. Once it's on, I don't think I'll switch back to the black one. In terms of power supply, this amplifier comes standard with a 32 volts 5A power brick. According to the data provided by Fossi Audio, this power supply can deliver an RMS power of up to 100 watts when driving a 4 ohm speaker. This should be more than enough for most bookshelf speakers. Fossi Audio also provides a 48 volts power brick option. If you want to use the V3 to drive larger bookshelf speakers and tower speakers, the 48 volts power supply would be a better choice. The V3 and the IEMA A07 that I have on hand both utilize the TPA3255 chip, and their functions are almost identical. In comparison, as a model that has been sold for several years, the craftsmanship of the A07 is a bit outdated. Like this knob, it seems very cheap compared to the V3's aluminum alloy one. Now let's compare these two units horizontally. The width of the two units is almost the same, but the V3 is a little shorter in length. The biggest difference is that the V3 has a very unique ventilation design, while the A07's casing is completely sealed. The input and output interfaces of the two units are the same. It seems that the V3 from Fossi Audio is designed to compete the A07. In addition, the V3 uses fewer screws on the body, and there isn't a single screw visible on the front panel. Whereas the screws on the A07 are quite conspicuous, giving a strong industrial feel. Speaking of heat dissipation, A07 has frequently been criticized for its overheating problem. I saw some users DIY the casing to improve the cooling. As for how well the V3 performs in terms of heat dissipation, I will conduct a special test later. Next, I will tear down this V3 to see what it looks like inside. Here is the v 3 circuit board. As two very similar products, I also disassembled the A07 for a comparison of the circuit boards. As you can see, the V3 has an NTC soft start resistor and a relay, which the A07 does not have. The A07 uses a common toroidal inductor, while the V3 uses a professional audio inductor, which is said to be produced by Sumida from Japan. These are filtering capacitors. Upon closer inspection, the V3 uses a higher quality NCC capacitor with a voltage resistance of 63 volts and 2200 microfarad capacitance. As for the A07, I can't recognize which brand it's using now. The A07 uses a taper B-pot, while the V3 uses a taper A-type, 
This is nice, as the human ear perceives sound volume on a logarithmic curve, and the Taper A-Pot fits this characteristic. The heatsink on the A07 is a traditional one with fins, but it's too close to the capacitors. On the V3 side, you can see that its power amplifier chip is not on the front. Instead, it's cleverly moved to the back of the circuit board. Here is a heatsink with a nano coating, and the TPA3255 chip is covered underneath it. This heatsink is directly attached to the casing, which means the whole casing can be transformed into a large heatsink. Fossi Audio has indeed put a lot of thought and creativity into the heat dissipation design of the V3. By the way, both amplifiers support rolling the op amps. The positions of the op amps are similar, both supporting 8-pin socket op amps. That's all for the comparison of the internal structure of these two amplifiers. Here is the comparison sheet of these two amps. Replacing the op amps usually only requires a pair of tweezers. Pry it slightly from the side of the op amps, and the chip can be easily removed. During installation, be aware that the pins need to align with the socket, and the op amps must be oriented correctly, otherwise they will not work and could even be burnt out. Okay, it's done. Quite easy to roll it. Up next, I'm diving into the parameter testing segment. Here, I'll be using this AP test instrument to examine some main parameters of the V3. I'll use this 32 volts power supply that comes with the V3. The equipment is all hooked up and ready to go, so let's get started with the test. First, let's take a look at the crucial synod value, which everyone is keen on. 90 decibels. Yes, this little digital amplifier has astonishingly achieved 90 decibels synod. In its price range, I believe this has to be the top. Next, I'm checking out the FFT and scope. Okay, the curves are good. For RMS level, I've set the gain to 26 decibels, input a 1 kHz signal with a 4 ohm load, to see what the maximum power is when using this 32 volts power supply. The distortion is around 0.5%, and the power reaches 89 watts, which is quite a good figure. Moving on to the signal-to-noise ratio test, the result is 106 decibels. The dynamic range is also 106 decibels. The power distortion test shows an impressive curve as well. That wraps up several key parameter tests. Under the same conditions, I'll test the parameters of the A07, the older amplifier. Lastly, I'll compile the results of these two amplifiers into a table. On the whole, the V3 outperforms A07 in terms of parameters. However, parameters alone don't tell the whole story. The A07 has a significant issue that it quickly goes into overload protection and shuts down when connected to a 48 volts power supply. I'll also test if the V3 has a similar issue. For this segment, I'm using a larger 48 volts 6.25 amps power supply and simulating a 4 ohm speaker load. First up, let's test the A07. I've attached a thermal probe to the A07's casing to monitor real-time temperature changes. I will set up the parameters so that the device is working at full load, which can be considered a stress test. Meanwhile, we'll also track the duration from startup to overload protection. Alright, let's get this started. The overload warning appeared on the software in less than 2 minutes. At this point, the thermometer displayed 40 degrees Celsius, which is the external casing's temperature. It may not seem high, but the internal must be really hot. I didn't expect it to go into overload protection so swiftly, in less than 2 minutes. Granted, we're running a stress test now, but I suspect it wouldn't last much longer during an actual music playback test that we'll conduct later. Next, I'll switch to the V3 for testing. 
Under the same conditions, let's start the test. After 8 minutes, the casing temperature has already reached 60 degrees Celsius, but there's no overload warning yet. Since the V3's casing features a ventilation design and the chip is located at the bottom, the temperature detected on the top could be a result of some degree of cooling. At the 10-minute mark, the overload warning started to appear, with the temperature showing 66 degrees Celsius. It seems that the V3 far outperforms the A07 in terms of durability and stability under high load. Of course, these tests represent stress conditions, simulating sustained high power operation. Next, I'll connect a sound source and 4 ohm speakers, use the same 48 volts 6.25 amps power supply, and play a bass heavy song to conduct a durability test on both amplifiers. First up, we still have the A07. It went into overload protection in less than 8 minutes. Let's reboot it now and see if it can continue working. Quickly, it went into automatic protection again. At this point, the casing temperature is around 45 degrees. Let's try rebooting it one more time. It's completely unable to function normally now. Next, let's see how the V3 performs. Twenty minutes have passed, and the V3 is still operating stably, with the casing temperature maintained at around 45 degrees. Based on the previous stress test, the V3 generally only goes into overload protection when the casing temperature exceeds 66 degrees. Under this estimation, if the V3 is playing music that we usually listen to, it essentially wouldn't encounter issues of overload protection or automatic shutdown. In this comparison, the V3 is indeed far ahead of the A07. It seems that by employing higher quality components and a well-designed cooling system, the V3 has significantly improved in terms of stability. The test continued for 22 minutes, and the V3 is still working very stably. Finally, I'd like to share my comprehensive thoughts on the V3 after this round of testing. Pros 1. High-quality components, all at audiophile grade. 2. Beautiful design, it clearly stands out compared to other products at the same price range. 3. Very innovative and distinctive cooling system, with ventilation holes at the top and bottom. The heatsink is attached to the casing, turning the entire casing into a radiator. 4. The test results are very competitive among products at the same price point, and the actual sound performance is very good. Despite its small size, it packs a powerful punch, and it has a very low noise floor. 5. High playability, the op amps can be replaced, the knob can be customized with different colors, and the power supply can be selected based on actual needs. Cons. 1. My personal preference leans towards a design with separate controls for power and volume. 2. The casing color is black, it would be better if there were other color options available. 3. The spacing between the binding posts is slightly crowded, widening it would make it more convenient. In conclusion, it's truly outstanding that the V3 can deliver such performance at a price point under $100. The IEMA A07 is a very classic mini class D amplifier. It has a good reputation and still has quite a few users to this day. Unfortunately, IEMA hasn't launched any classic products like the A07 since, and instead has been reducing the quality of components in the A07. The V3 that Fossi Audio has introduced this time is clearly a full upgrade based on the A07. It not only captures the essence of the A07, 
but also makes considerable improvements and upgrades. My favorite part is its innovative design with ventilation holes and full casing heat dissipation. I'm active on ASR and often see Fossi Audio interacting with users on the forum. As they claim, they listen to user suggestions and even criticisms, then use this feedback to upgrade and optimize their products. This V3 is a representative of that, and in my opinion, is a very successful product. I hope Fossi Audio continues to work hard to bring more affordable and easy-to-use hi-fi products to audio enthusiasts. That's all for the test and review. See you next time.